How do you feel that the female leads uh, differ in Indian cinema versus the female leads that are in American cinema? What type of personality traits? I think uh, it depends on the films itself. Uh, a lot of the Bollywood movies are musicals, so I feel that the heroines are more glamorous. Uh, and but. Sometimes, depending on if it's a drama, they can be unglamorous and they do play the, you know, the character. And I think there's a difference between Bollywood and Indian cinema, where Indian cinema focuses more on the everyday people and their stories more than the escape, 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 sorry, escapism of the Bollywood. But it's fine. Like you know, there's nothing wrong with Bollywood. It's fine. A lot of and there's a lot of regional films as well, uh, like the Tamil Malayalam films, um, Sinhalese films um, in the South Asian region. And I love it all. And I love Hollywood movies as well because that's what I do. I act more on Hollywood TV and film, and I think Hollywood is like the heroines are more. They may prepare more for the character that they're playing than for the glamour. So, but I think both is not wrong. I think it's what it is what it is. So it's both. I enjoy both films, and I love uh, both types of films. So. Well, it seems as if uh, Bollywood stars are treated basically as royalty. Uh, there's such an exuberant fan base for them. With great power comes great responsibility. So what would you say to your fans that probably hang on every word and watch your tweets and, and are very dependent on what you think? I would say to take responsibility for your own actions. Uh, just don't... Uh, sometimes, yeah, you can't help but be in your circumstance, but whatever happens, then know that you're strong, that you don't have to resort to drink or drugs or stuff like that, that you can get through things. Talk to people, just know, be aware of what's going on around you. And it's okay to be moderate, like have wine once in a while, you know, that's fine, it's your own judgment, but... Um, just be responsible for yourself and just enjoy life and just keep moving forward and love life. That's excellent. Thank you. You're well, great advice. Thank you. So, Brian, what brings you here tonight? To see this Bollywood film. Um, and, to, you know, I have not seen... I've been my first carpet for Bollywood. And I have heard that there's this new 3D thing being used with it. So I'm curious to see how they do. You know, I'm curious. I know it hasn't been done before, so I have high expectations. When I say high expectations, I look forward to them doing well, is right. what I should say. So I expect them to do really well with it, and I hope they do. So, yeah, so that's why I'm here to support. Right. what do you say to an actor that says, hey, I just want to do the creative. I'm not a business person. Hi, you're a friend of mine. You know, I mean, being a, I'm much more on the creative side. You have to be more business-oriented, as they tell you. And it really does help to get that, to get that, um, uh, to have that insight. Because just being creative, you can get, for lack of a better expression, really screwed on your uh, business side. But I think you need a business side in order to move, to move your creative side forward. So I think they need to go hand in hand, and you got to concentrate on both. And what do you do to kind of get your mojo back? Because being an actor, especially in L.A., is a really, yeah. really disheartening thing. When you feel maybe oh, yeah, like, yeah. you know what, I'm ready to leave L.A., what do you do to recharge? I've never wanted to leave L.A. Maybe go on for a vacation for about three weeks, but um, go see a show. Go see a show. Jump back into class. Um, revisit your favorite movie. Do something. Or your favorite actor or something. Or you just read read maybe your favorite book just to get re-inspired. Because going to see a show is the way to really do it. Because you, And get good seats. Because that stuff, to see their faces and to see what they do and... Uh, to, it, it, it really reinvigorates you. So, go see a show. Thank you. All Appreciate right. it. Thank you. Thank you. So, gentlemen, what would you tell fellow actors about getting the business side of their careers ready? Not just the artistic side. So many art artistic people say, you know what, I don't want to deal with the money side. I don't want to deal with the, the logistics of my career. I just want to work on the craft. Is that true? Can you just leave that to someone else, even in the beginning? Not really. I mean, I would say... Invest a little bit of your money in a good accountant or a good business manager because they're dealing with your money. So you want someone that's reputable, that deals with good people and knows what they're doing with your money. And then, you know, social media is kind of important nowadays. So some sort of online presence, whether that's your website or Facebook fan page or Twitter. And then having a good agent because they'll obviously filter a lot of the rubbish out and only give you the stuff that you really need to read. Yeah, I'm the worst businessman in the world. <laughs> That's not true. Could you deal with it? 
What, your business? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll do it. You'd be good at that. 10%. Okay. 20. Fine, see, he Done. is the worst businessman. <laughs> Well, speaking of Twitter, with, with great power comes great responsibility. So do you feel any type of sort of weight on your back to have responsible tweets? Are you conscious of what you put out there so that if your fans see it, it's it's acceptable? It's it's. Well, I mean, my Twitter page is a reflection of me. And I, I'm not racist or sexist or homophobic. I'm not fascist or, you know, I don't have weird elements of my personality so I might be a little aggressive to someone who's being nasty towards me but I'll never throw the first stone you know and I'll usually just show that people are being inappropriate and leave it at that you know but if someone gets nasty then and I feel like it I might point out that they're behaving badly but I don't I don't tend to swear on Twitter I don't tend to say anything that's inflammatory for no good reason so if someone prompts you, it's on, basically. Yeah, and I'll call out people that I think are behaving badly. Like, I'll, I've called out Bill O'Reilly a few times and Piers Morgan a few times, but for the most part, it's friendly and positive. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of new to the whole tweeting thing. And I, as I say, I do it through a, my band, so it's not totally personal. Like, all the guys in the band tweet stuff, and I kind of keep it as quite a funny thing and something to put some photos in. I don't really use it, you know, to put across any sort of personal beliefs or anything, really. You know, I keep it quite, you know, it's about the band, really. Right. And lastly, what do you do to recharge? I know L.A. gets a little bit hectic sometimes. Sometimes rejection sets in or people become a little bit jaded with the business. What do you do to recharge so you feel better? I travel quite a bit, you know. I mean, if I'm in L.A. And I, and I don't have time to go somewhere on a plane, then I'll drive to Joshua Tree or Palm Springs or Santa Barbara. Just try and get away for the weekend, you know. Hang around with people that aren't actors, apart from Billy, who is an actor. You know, I'll hang around with people in the music business or, or people in different walks of life. And then Billy and I both enjoy surfing here and there. Yoga, fantastic. Yeah, I think travel's a great one. And yoga is probably the biggest thing to kind of de-stress and put perspective on things, you know. All right, thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right. What would you say is the difference between lead actresses and their personality traits portrayed in Indian cinema versus American lead actresses? Is there a difference? Yeah. Um, I think the difference is actually quite sort of, um, quite sort of becoming smaller. I would say over the years, um, I do think women that's portrayed universally, there is, you know, it has, still has to improve, but I do think that it doesn't matter where they're coming from, there are more challenging parts in India now, and as opposed to in Hollywood, and I think it's a wonderful change. So, um, I think the, the gap is getting smaller, I, I would think, yes. yes. And what do you say to um, the, the recent ban on the film in India? I think right now they have two weeks that they're putting on it, and, and some people are calling it cultural terrorism. What would you say to that? Well, I do think uh, if you're an artist, if you're a painter, musician, filmmaker, I do think you have the right to be able to communicate with the audience your thoughts, your 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 you know what you what you believe in, and uh, I respect that. It's uh, it's the artistic license that I think everybody should have, whether you're an artist or not. The freedom of speech is very important. I think it's it should be supported and protected. Yes. It appears that that Bollywood is so enthusiastic about their actors and actresses that it's almost like they're royalty. Whereas in America, they're definitely enthusiastic, but it doesn't seem the same exuberance. So with great power comes a lot of responsibility. Do you ever feel a weight to really uh, make sure that you send the right message and and do the right sort of thing, so to speak, uh, because you know you have so many people depending on what you say. That that is true. That is true. And. Um, and I think films universally, they have a message. I mean, I've, I've actually seen films that have changed my life. So I think the medium itself is you have a great responsibility, and I hope that everybody does right by it. So, yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Roger, what brings you here tonight? Uh, I'm here to support my friends who are part of the cast and crew, and uh, Kamal Hassan sir, who's the director and uh, you know the lead actor in the film, is one of my idols growing up in India, and he's one of the reasons I am an actor today in Hollywood, and uh, uh, I'm also working in on some projects in Chennai and Bombay in India, and uh, it'd be such a dream come true to work with him in the future, and so I'm here to support all of the cast and crew 
and all of the hard work that's gone into making this film, and it's the beautiful, uh, you know, Pacific Theaters in the Grove, the kind of hangout place in L.A. for families, so... When other actors come to you for advice and they say, I'm in a lull in my career, can you show me what I should do to kind of drum up work for myself? What do you tell them? You know, it depends on the type of situation they're in. Um, you know, I think it's a difference between being active or passive. Uh, it's usually when you wait for things to happen that you, you come across those kinds of difficulties. Uh, but, you know, um, uh, the way that I uh, approach it is the, is the th same thing I tell them is to, uh, you know, create work for yourself. You know, if you're good at writing, write something and get it produced, whether it's a short film or a you know, feature film, whatever size of the project, it doesn't matter. You know, enter it into film festivals, things like that, so that you have the recognition uh, going for your work. And it also keeps your artistic, you know, kind of energy alive. So that's one of the things I tell, you know, friends or even, you know, mentees, you know, people who come to me for advice, is to, is to be proactive and create the work for yourself. That's great. And lastly, you know, Kamala Hassan has such a, 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 yeah. a loyal fan base and, and he's really like royalty yes. uh, in India. Do you feel the same responsibility? Because Indian cinema seems to really just put their, their actors on a whole other level than maybe America does with their actors. Absolutely. That's, that's very true. I, I do feel that sense of responsibility for sure. Because, you know, representing the diaspora, the community that we're part of, we're not a very huge community. We're about 1% of the uh, U.S. population. So we're, we're certainly a minority. But uh, we're a minority that's achieved a lot. You know, everything from, you know, uh, advisors in the White House to the governor of Louisiana to, you know, activists in, in politics and in the, uh, uh, you know, in the uh, public health space in, in society. And, and, you know, I feel privileged and blessed to be able to represent them. You know, I do play a lot of doctors, which is the common stereotype, you know, amongst Indian, uh, you know, professionals. Um, and you know, but we, we've we've done well for ourselves because of education and hard work. And I feel very privileged to represent them, and I feel that responsibility definitely. And and you were so right. You know, Kamal Hassan sir is a superstar in India. You know, he he is idolized. You know, like like no one else. And you know, it's such a a, a dream to be able to work with him in the future because he's he sets such a high bar for himself with the quality of filmmaking he does, and he pushes the technol you know technological envelope in terms of hiring people from Hollywood to come in and do special effects and stunts and you know all these things. And it's just a, a pleasure to watch his projects. Um, and I grew up with his work as a, as a kid in India. And uh, you know he's definitely one of the reasons I'm an actor today. So he's a, he's a huge inspiration for me. Very nice. Well, thank you. Appreciate thank it. Thank you so much for interviewing me. I understand your films have screened in Sundance, or a film of yours has screened in Sundance, is that right? No, no, no. I just came back from Sundance. I had a couple of friends who had films there. Um, I was just, just supporting this year. And, and, and you know, I, I produce independent film as well as acting them. So, you know, it's always good to go out and support a couple of my friends who have films there this year. Okay, sorry about that. So, so knowing that you are part of sort of the Sundance machine, or you've been there and you've seen it, and so many indie filmmakers strive for that Sundance premiere, and they always think they're going to get it. Do you think it's realistic for a lot of people to try for it? Or maybe try smaller festivals and, and spread themselves out further? I, I don't know if I'm being clear with that, but do you think that's a realistic... Yeah, you know, it, it's it's funny. I, I produced two features now, and, and we've... Both for, our, for both our features, we submitted a Sundance, we didn't get in. Um, so, you know, we're, we're right in the thick of that, you know, those, those, those filmmakers trying to get in. Um, you know, I, I've been a couple years in a row now to try to see what I, I can find in trends and, and, and types of films that they look for. Um, you know, realistically, it, you know, it always, like anything else, whether it's theater, it's, it's movie, it's TV, it's always a script. It starts with the script, you know. You have to have a great script and, and everything else falls into place. And I think, uh, I think you always have to try, right? If you don't try, you don't get, you know. And, and, and you, I think, really being focused and, and bringing uh, good people on board your project, you have a better shot. You know, uh, Sundance likes to bring back a lot of their past alums. So um, I've noticed a lot of people embrace and bring in certain crew members that have, you know, whether they're cast or crew, have been in a film or involved with a film that was at the festival. So, you know, there are little things you can try to do along the way to, to, to embrace and hopefully, you know, catch the eye of them. Right. And are you ever planning to use crowdfunding to, to fund any of your budgets? Or? 
You know, we haven't for any of our features. We uh, there have been a couple of short films and stuff that I've helped produce that that we did use crowdfunding for. Um, for features, you know, it's 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 a very realistic possibility. I mean, there's so much that that is uh, you know that's coming in the way of crowdfunding. There's a site called Film Break that I have a film that we are uh, sort of developing with them as a tentpole project, um, and it's sort of a different approach to crowdfunding where this is. It's sort of generated through social media, your awareness and, and your tracking, and through them, they have compiled a list of investors and people that want to uh, invest in film. So, you know, it's instead of campaigning to get, you know, money, you're campaigning to get the attention and, and, and sort of just the, you know, the social media following that will then turn over and hopefully into to, to funding from other people. So. There's all sorts of new companies like that developing, and I, I think that's, you know, it, it's kind of an interesting way, too, because you don't have, always have to be held by an investor or, or, or obligated to that, because, you know, you have their perks that you, you give out, but aside from that, you know, you're not, you know, creatively, I think artists like the fact that they're not held back by an investor, you know, saying you have to do this or have to put that person in the film, you know? Right. Can an independent filmmaker be too independent for their own good? I don't know. I don't know what that means, really. Um, I'm sure... <laughs> Every, you know, I, 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 I think if you're doing it, you're doing it. You know, that's that's the hard thing. There, especially in today's society, you know, it's one of the things I always tell my friends. It's like, and the only reason that we're producing films now is because it's like, I knew a lot of people that had various talents and different things. And, and it was like, there should never be a moment where we're not working. Because, you know, especially with today, you know, and technology and cameras and everything, it's even on a consumer level, it's so cheap to get professional quality. So I think it's always possible to do stuff. And that, for me, I, you know, I always embrace just keep working. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. And what brings you here tonight? Well, I'm here to support the film. You know, uh, it's the, the Indian culture, and hey, it's pretty intriguing to me. So I'm here just to do just that and enjoy the, the good people, good vibes, and good time. You know? Okay. I'm curious, do you feel an obligation to keep up on social media, to let your fans know what you're up to? And, and how do you deal with that? Because I know it can be a time suck. I mean, it takes a lot of time to be on Twitter. It takes a lot of time to be on Facebook. You know, in today's world, it's, it's definitely important to, to social network. Uh, I'm probably one of the worst social networkers, but... It's Why a, is that? Sorry to interrupt. There's times where there's so many tweets and stuff, and I'm like, I try to reply to everybody, but it's, it's impossible. It's, yeah. I mean, maybe it's not impossible, but you, you tweet at somebody, they'll retweet, or they'll tweet at you, and then... You reply, and then they reply two more times. Right, like, right, right. Uh oh, so, and then you're like trying to keep up. So it, it's kind of tough, but uh, you know, you, you try your hardest and uh, just expect for the best, you know. So, what advice would you give someone else that's in your shoes that has people that are kind of curious about what's he up to? What would you tell them? Because it is overwhelming, and what, where's the balance? Well, I think the only thing you could really tell anybody is, hey, just you know, everyone lives their life just like they do. Um, Nobody means to neglect or, or reject anyone. They can't, you know, contact you or reach out. It's not because they're ignoring you or anything. It's like they have their own lives too, you know. Uh, they're human just like you are, you know. So, uh, at the end of the day, you know, I just keep living my life. And, like, for example, as right now, I have a huge announcement coming soon. Okay. It's so, so major for me and just, it's a big, it's a big part of, of our country that we follow together. So, I can't. No really hints? get into the I can't okay. get into the hints because right. it'll be like boom that's what it is but okay. um, as of that you know and then shortly after that I mean I'm in, I'm in, I'm in theatrical uh, things now as well so I have some movies that are coming up and May June ish I'm back in the ring conquering some more titles some world championships again so you know ready <laughs> and lastly what do you do when when you just want to get away like what do you do to recharge. I'm kind of a different breed, I guess. Uh, I go out and I surf, I, I road bike, I get away like that uh, mentally. Um, sometimes I'll go travel, which I'll go, I'll go out of the country just by myself. I don't want to be with anybody, so I just grab a plane ride and next thing you know I'm in like London or I'm in France, I'm in, uh, you name it, Caribbean, Puerto Rico, uh, nice. anywhere. I just, I get away by myself though. Myself. So it's, it's kind of a great escape for me. I mean. You know, when I come back, I'm just like kind of soaking in the world again and then start over. So, that kind nice. of, yeah, it's a good escape. Okay. Try I'm going to try it actually. Yeah, thank you. Right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. All right, take care. Leilani, what brings you here tonight? Well, I'm here to, uh, you know, support Kamal. He's, he's 
such a well-rounded guy. He wears many hats. I'm very impressed with people that could just do not only acting, but writing, producing, directing. I'm so not a leader. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I just, I'm not organized like that. Okay. But I'm impressed with people that can and do and have that vision and can put it all together. So uh, it should be very fun. It should be a very cool movie to see. What scene in a film or which actress have you seen where you said, you know what, I want to do that? I want to do that? Yeah. I can tell you a scene in a movie that I went, okay, I maybe I should not be an actress because she is just so phenomenal. I'm so impressed. Oh, God. Can you share it or is it? <laughs> is it okay, that's all right. <laughs> You know what? Jennifer Aniston always just comes to mind that she is so such a leading lady type of look, and yet she's so hilarious and funny, and that she has the capacity to really move people in a in a kind of an everyday ordinary way, and really get to the heart of the the funniness of it. It's it's kind of a hard thing to do when you look as gorgeous as she does. So she kind of comes to mind. And lastly, what's kryptonite for an actor? Kryptonite? <laughs> Not to go right to the negative, but because it is such a, a hard profession, and, and a lot of artists are so sensitive, we all are, but artists I think more so, and that's what makes them great artists. What's, what's a kryptonite for an actor? I think just having the, the strength to carry on, because so many times you're stopped at maybe not making enough money to pay the bills, or just hearing no so many times. It's just finding that inner strength, and for me, it's family life. I have three children, and to me, uh, that is just where it's at for me. And uh, it's really giving me the strength to just carry on, so that's my kryptonite, having a great family support system. Very grounding when, when you're chasing after a toddler or something. Yeah. It is, although mine are in college, high school, and oh, elementary. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that, but okay, wow. Yeah, no, right. more, no more babies to crawl after, but okay. uh, yeah, it's been a very grounding experience. Motherhood rocks. All right, well, thank you. What brings you here tonight, Ben? We're here to support the uh, independent film today, here with my publicist. Um, and check it out and have a good time. Well, so many people have seen Project Runway. What do you think the public doesn't know about the fashion industry? We, we know it to be maybe cutthroat, but what are some surprises that might actually be positive things that the public isn't aware of with the fashion industry? About the fashion industry in general? Yeah. Um, I think there are a lot of uh, collaborations going on right now in the industry that I think makes uh, fashion a little more exciting, where creative minds can get together uh, with other cultures like India. I've been talking to some Indian suppliers uh, using some of the textiles and designs in my line. So that will also bring you know my products to another level and bring a new element to it. So I think that's something um, that's happening now in fashion that I'm really excited about. Of, of all time, what's the best model who knows how to sort of wear it well and, and has sort of, I mean, for me, I thought Gia was the best model. I thought she was just, she had this thing where she was just, there was like a duality to her. W what about you? Who's the, your favorite model? Who has a favorite model? I can't even answer that question. No? Uh, okay. No, I don't even want to. <laughs> Why they might be listening? Okay. Yeah, exactly. All right, all right. Well, maybe they're, maybe they're from the past. You don't have to tell them now. So they're not modeling anymore. Anybody? Um, you know what? That's a tough question. I really would have to think about it a little more. No problem. Princess Grace. Okay, Princess Grace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Ben. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Okay. What brings you here tonight? Uh, well, a good friend of mine does documentaries in India, and I heard that this guy is like the next Tom Cruise. Uh, I mean, well, not even the next. He is the Tom Cruise of India. So these two worlds collided. I heard about it. I was invited. I was like, this is fantastic. I've got to check it out. Do you remember what your life was like before you were on a series and what you did every day to drum up work for yourself? I remember what life was like and uh, yeah, I mean, work was great. I was in three theater companies and I was doing from Shakespeare to classical to drama, I mean to, from directing to stage fighting and everything else. So very, very busy and I got to pick and choose what roles I wanted to do in Hollywood. I didn't, I didn't have to go in for a day player, this, that, and the other, because I was so busy on stage and getting under stage. So that was good. Uh, and then a role came along for me on NYPD Blue, and, and I was able to ease out of the theater companies and stay with that. And then a couple of months later, I got The Shield. So. 
what do you think actors should know about the business side? Even even if they're just small time and they're just getting their toe in the water, what should they know about the business side of acting? Because so many people don't want to go there, but it's necessary. I think there are three things you got to know. Um, best advice I was given: this business ebbs and flows, so save your money whenever you can. Um, always work on your craft. You know, um, it is it is a set of muscles that need to be nourished and encouraged and worked. And, and lastly, if it's really your dream, there's nothing that will stop you from achieving that. Yeah, yeah, and that's what really has helped me. I mean, when the work isn't flowing, I know that I'll get myself in an acting shop. And if I'm really working hard, I know to put away the money so that I, when it slows down, I'm still okay. And I'm not buying the goods today so that I'm not you know, suffering tomorrow. And it's, it's been good advice all along. But even as a theater actor, the same thing has happened. I'm doing four plays and doing tours. I was putting the money away, so, and that's it's a hard thing to remember because it is an ebb and flow business. Right, right. And lastly, do you think you'll be on Twitter one day? I don't think I have the capacity to get to Twitter. It's, it's addicting. Fun. Is it? It is, yeah. <laughs> Once you try it. I guess I'll never know. <laughs> the first tweet is free. So, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll never know. <laughs> All right, thank you. Appreciate My pleasure. Okay. What would you say is the difference in personality types and the way that women are portrayed in Indian cinema versus American cinema? I think um, luckily perceptions are changing a lot and it's a lot of blending happening. But um, I am proud to say that even though in Indian cinema women are portrayed in a very uh, traditional fashion in some movies, I think that is also great because it, it reflects an era that still exists in some areas of India. Whereas the, the modern woman that's portrayed, who is similar to the Western woman, that's a changing diaspora. So I, I believe that I would like both things to coexist, and that's what I've tried to do in my first home production. I just released my first home production, and I played kind of a bilateral role where one of me was very traditional, and the other me was extremely modern and Westernized. It hasn't been released yet? Yes. Oh, it has. Okay. In fact, it is uh, touching its 100th day in theaters day after tomorrow oh, okay. in India. Oh. And it's called Jan Leva 555. And how has it been received? How has the more radical side of that character been received? Um, in fact, it was very... Uh, it was a shock to people to see me on that side because it's not just the traditional, but I play as um, a mythological aspect of Indian cinema, which is a self-transforming cobra who transforms into this beautiful woman. Um, that's part of our lore in India. So one of my roles was that, and it was kind of an unexpected jolt that they received. And um, I think it's really well received because it's touching its 100th day. It sounds like it. Wow. That's now, I know with Indian cinema, especially with Bollywood, um, you know, stars are basically royalty, whereas in the States, it seems like they're definitely revered, but not as much so. And with great power, a lot of responsibility comes. What type of responsibility do you feel to your fans? Because I'm sure on all the sites, they want to know what you're up to and, and everything. What do you feel as a duty to them? In fact, the funny thing is I have a, a I would say, a, a dual life myself. In real life, I'm a doctor as well. So. Uh, in, in that sense, I think my responsibility as, a, as a, a responsible citizen of society is already being fulfilled in my role as a doctor in, in real life. And um, I took up uh, acting as a hobby, and now it's turning into almost a bilateral profession because I love the world of movies. So a responsibility, yes, I think just by being a, a, a strong citizen who loves humanity, who wants to do good for humanity, I don't think I need to be a better example than that, you know? Yeah, I, I think I think that's pretty much it. Now, don't you think that that grounds you so much, though, because you're dealing with medicine and all the things that, you know, life and death that people are facing, that it really grounds you? It does. Yeah. And sometimes that's a negative because I'm too grounded, you know? Okay. Uh, but on the other hand, I have so many varied life experiences as an emergency room physician in the United States that um, I can put that part of my soul which has seen the, the the various extremes of human life and death situations into the intensity in my movies. So I think I have a little bit of an extra edge over many of the other great actresses who I, I really respect and adore, but I like to think I have that little extra edge because of this extra life experience. Right. And lastly, uh, what do you say about the film being banned for a few weeks uh, back in uh, Kamala Hassan's 
hometown or, or actually in, in India? Well, I sure hope uh, it is seen by everyone because um, it is the world of cinema. It is a it is a world of entertainment. It is a world of just creating awareness, you know. So I, I really would like every film that is made so well and that too with a, a stellar a stellar person such as Kamalji, I want the whole world to see it and I sure hope it gets cleared up. Yes, and I'm looking forward to seeing it myself now. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate so much. it. Thank you. And what brings you ladies here tonight? Well, we are involved with another project that has a very uh, similar crew group as this one. So a few of the crew members from this project are also involved in ours. It's called Trainers, which is a sitcom about personal trainers in Los Angeles. And we're premiering on the Fox lot in May. And I co-created, co-wrote, and acted in it. And Alexa is our director. Yes. So we're really excited about it. Very excited. If someone asked you two to write a book on... Coming to LA as an actress, what would the Reader's Digest version be? Okay, when you come to LA as an actress, two things you should know. One, I stole this, take Fountain. <laughs> I read. And two, get a day job that is very flexible, yet you make the most amount of money in the least amount of time. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Anything to add? Oh, wow. Um, I just say, hey, have a lot of life experiences. As an actor, you're saying? Yeah. As yeah. An actor. Really, a lot of life experiences, and you can bring that into your work. Um, take acting classes, you know, workshop, meet casting directors, meet directors, meet showrunners of television shows, and create your own work. That's what you know we've done, and I think that you have to. You have to be creative, and that's why you're doing it is to yeah. be creative. So, yeah. yeah. How do people get those life experiences? Maybe they're from a small town, and they've had oh you okay, and they've had kind of. A, a good a good life, maybe nothing too tragic. How would you get those life experiences in a safe way? That's a great question. I think, um, well, for example, I went to, I lived abroad my one of my years in college, and I think, just like Alexa said, as many things that you could do, travel or taking art classes or, I don't know, uh, interacting with people you normally wouldn't have interact with, just going outside your comfort zone in general, I think. Totally. Yeah. I agree. Go to art museums. Yeah. Go to movies. Um, people watch. Um, and like Zayla said, you know, generate material. Think outside the box. And really think that, you know, nobody stops you but you. If you want to do this, pursue those dreams and you can make it happen. Meet French men. Oh, well, yes. How did I forget that? Exactly. <laughs> Sorry, that was my addition. I love it. Okay. Keep it. And then lastly, tell us about your series. You said it's about personal uh, trainers in L.A. Yes, it's a sitcom, a half-hour sitcom about personal trainers in Los Angeles. And they're kind of a ragtag, misfit group of trainers who are trying to keep their small gym alive and the other big equinoxes and LA fitnesses and yeah and it's obviously a comedy <laughs> a lot of silliness and funny situations in the gym as you could probably imagine occur. <laughs> and is this going uh, on YouTube or you're pitching it to a network or? We're pitching it to a few different networks um, and then it is formatted as a web series also so we can either do the web series or the pilot and see what happens what takes off so yeah. 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 All right, well, thank you, ladies. Best of luck with the series. Okay, all right. Pooja Kumar, and my Twitter handle is Pooja Kumar NY, and you can go to PoojaKumar.com. Great. Uh, how was Kamala Hassan as a director to work with? How would he give you notes and feedback? Uh, him as a director, I mean, is simply is fantastic. You know, he uh, he seamlessly transitions between an actor, the director, the producer, which has been absolutely fantastic. So. Um, for me, it was really sort of a humbling experience because he explained everything so sort of like uh, very peacefully. Um, and, you know, he's a very intimidating person. So when you first meet him, you're sort of scared because he's a man who's done over 200 movies and you want to basically, you know, impress him and, and sort of strive for excellence. Um, so you're nervous, you know, in the beginning. And then slowly, you know, as you meet him, he sort of calms you down and, um, and because he wants you to do so well, you actually step outside your own comfort zone, which I think is a rare quality, and I think it's, it's a sign of a great director. So, yeah. How similar is your character in the film to the way you are in real life, and what are the differences? Well, I wonder if he did cast me based on, you know, um, you know, it's a visual medium, uh, and I think uh, I identify with Nirupama on, like, so many levels. And sense of, I play a scientist, she's a nuclear oncologist, and, um, you know, I've always, I've liked science all my whole life, so I've, I had that sort of, you know, kind of closeness to that. And 
you know, she's sort of insecure about who she is. And I think initially, as we all, like, as we're younger, we're a little insecure about who we are. And then as we grow older, we become sort of secure with what, what, what kind of skin we're living in. And I think that's what her character is about, too, is that <clears throat> she's initially sort of insecure about who she is. And then slowly, slowly, she transitions into this woman that sort of becomes, becomes confident, but has a little bit of quirkiness with her. So I'm kind of like that, too. <laughs> Do you think that makes her more likable so people aren't as intimidated by her? I think so. You know, and, you know, Kumbhasa writes such beautiful female characters, you know, whether it's one line or five lines or ten lines. He writes such beautiful and powerful roles for them. So I think that's why, you know, it's sort of he brings in the quirkiness, he brings in the smartness, he brings in, um, you know, something that I think everyone can identify with. And Indian cinema, cinema, excuse me, is so exuberant about their actors and actresses. It's almost like they're actual royalty. Whereas I think American cinema is a little bit different. Um, do you feel a great responsibility to the people of India to share things? And I mean, I know there's so much on websites, and it's yeah. it's a lot. I think that there's a huge responsibility that we have. Um, absolutely, I think. You know, um, Indian cinema is becoming uh, sort of very popular because of, I think, the music, the fashion, um, literature. And so I think, you know, we definitely have a duty. And I think if we don't sort of inspire people or, or expand the knowledge, then we're doing ourselves a disservice. And lastly, uh, because the film is banned for a few weeks yes. in India, what do you have to say? I think Salman Rushdie said it was a cultural emergency because this film is, is held back. What do you have to say? I, I you know, I'm, I'm sad about this whole situation. You know, the movie is something that we should all see. We're artists. We live in a democracy. We live in a free world. We should be able to show anything that we feel strongly about. And uh, I'm, I'm really sad that people would go against uh, someone like uh, Kamal Sir, who is a man who is for the people. He's always fought for human rights. He fights for people, whether they're Muslim or Christian or, or Hindus, it doesn't matter. So um, it's making me very angry and very sad at the same time. So I think if we all sort of pull together and show the support, it'll make a big difference. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. How is Kamala Hassan as a director? How did he give you notes? How did he let you know to change this or that? Kamal Hassan is a perfectionist in the most beautiful way. I think he's the chaplain of our today. He is a guy who is, who is versatile, creates things um, very spontaneous, um, and wants very specific visions. And, but he'll sit down with you a day before and really go and work with you. Uh, you know, speaking uh, Hindi and Tamil was probably my difficult thing. Um, I speak Hindi, but speaking Tamil, I never spoke Tamil. Um, so we had to go through it phonetically. Um, very giving, very generous. To have a legend so, so giving is, is humbling and, and unbelievable. Very nice. Um, and... Uh, sorry, Salman Rushdie is calling the banning of the film in India a cultural emergency. What do you have to say about that? Uh, well, it's interesting. I'm in uh, Salman Rushdie's uh, film called Midnight's Children, and that's coming out in the next week as well, February 1st. Uh, Salman Rushdie was banned for, as a fatwa for, uh, you know, uh, for satanic verses. However, uh, I think it's insane. I think it's absolutely insane because cinema is about, to, about helping society not bringing it back. It's fanaticism that holds back society. So I think it's a regressive thing that's going on right now in India. Um, we need to change that. We need to, we need to stand up for this because this has to change. You know, um, I think what... Uh, uh, I, I agree... Uh, what was Rajdi's exact quote? Uh, that it was a cultural emergency that he felt that writers, filmmakers, artists, etc. need to keep our nerve and continue to work no matter what. I agree absolutely with Mr. Rushdie. It is a cultural emergency. It's a wake-up call to India to not censor, to say that this is important and this is what life is about. Art is essential. Um, fanaticism is all, will always be there, but only art can change the world. And lastly, uh, Indian cinema and Bollywood especially have such an exuberance for their fans. It's like they, or excuse me, for their stars. It's like they treat them as royalty. Yeah. Do you feel a great sense of responsibility to what you say and what you tweet and the messages that you... Absolutely. I think it should be everyone who has any type of power, uh, whether it be Indian cinema or Western cinema. I do a lot of work in both. I do work here and there. Um, if you're Twitter, if you're Facebook, if you speak, it is... We are uh, the voice. You know, if you've got a personality, use it. 
use it to change the world. Someone like Kamal Hassan is doing that. Someone like Amir Khan in Bollywood is doing that. People need to step up and change the world because uh, the only people who listen uh, or the pe uh, when they when people speak of personalities, when you've got a follower, it is a responsibility and a duty because we've got listeners. So let's continue to listen and follow and create change. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And Mr. Kapoor, on your Twitter, I noticed that you have hashtag responsible tweets. And we've been talking with a lot of the people here that when there is great power, there's also great responsibility to have a message that's for the people. Uh, why do you advocate that? What are some of the things that you preach to people that do have followings in terms of being responsible? I think, I think there is no power without responsibility. And I think all artists, ultimately, you could choose to be the entertainer. But at one point, art, artists are the conscience of society, always, and therefore part, they're partly rebellious. That's part of their job, to be the conscience. The conscience is always rebellious against structure. And so all artists need to carry that responsibility of being the conscience of the society and carry it responsibly, you know, not carelessly. You can't be careless with it. And Mr. Rushdie is saying that uh, the banning of the film is uh, is like cultural terrorism. It's a cultural emergency uh, that we are not able to see the film in India right now. And there's a two-week ban or however long they have. What's your take on that? I think Salman is completely right. I, I think he said the right thing. I think that what, what happens is fringe groups come in and take over. And the fear of violence by these fringe groups often will stop any kind of cultural identity of the film or cultural growth. And I think it's the state's responsibility, not the responsibility to ban the films, but to ensure that there's no violence. I mean, that's why we elect, have an elected government. So I think that really is cultural terrorism is caused by the inability of the state to stop violence uh, provoked by French groups. Great. Thank you so much. time where are you finding your strength my strength yes from from the audience from the no. audience from the audience okay. and my family yes okay and uh, you know we've, we've seen responsible tweets on Twitter what do you feel is a responsibility for you for the people of India to tell them and to help for them my responsibility as an, uh, as an artist is something that 
I have honed over time. And now what I have to say is that you have trusted me all along. I've been fair. I love people. I have no religion, but I have people to love of any religion. So I respect them. I respect the love I get, and I respect the love I give to them. Wonderful. Good luck for tonight. Thank you. 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 Thank you.